Hashmap Megabytes. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hashmap Megabytes. Today, we are going to be talking about Cloudy SQL. Cloudy SQL is a pandas and Jupyter extension that manages the Snowflake connection process and provides a simplified way to execute SQL in Snowflake from a Jupyter notebook. That's a bit of a mouthful. So, in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to install and set up Cloudy SQL, and also I'm going to give a few use cases and examples of how to use the tool. But first, let's uh, go through the API here. We have, with Cloudy SQL currently, we have a IPython magic method, which is percent sign, percent sign SQL underscore two underscore snowflake, where you can actually call this uh, magic method and write raw SQL here, and you can run it directly in Snowflake with very little configuration. And we also have a write snowflake method where you have pd.dataframe.cloudy underscore SQL dot write snowflake. And you can write your pandas data frame directly to a snowflake table. You can also, it all, there are also inlined uh, or passed in argument options that you can use. So, yeah, let's uh, use the tool, and I'm going to show you how to set it up. So first, what you're going to want to do is open a new project and terminal, and you're going to want to install the tool. You can do so by typing in pip install cloudy-sql, and I've already installed it for this project. Then, what you're going to want to do is open a Jupyter Notebook, and Jupyter will be automatically installed along with Cloudy SQL. And then you can open a new notebook. I'm going to open Cloudy here. And you're going to want to run this line here. Uh, percent sign load x Cloudy SQL. Let me run that there. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a configuration file where I can configure my default Snowflake credentials that I want to connect to Snowflake with. And Cloudy SQL, whenever you call one of the Cloudy SQL methods, it will automatically, or it will know rather, to look at, the, at that configuration file and use the credentials there if they're configured. Um, so what you're going to want to do is open a new terminal. And the configuration file is created in your home directory and from there, you're going to want to cd into cloudy or dot cloudy underscore SQL, which is uh, created whenever you run this load command here. And then you're going to want to open the configuration.yaml file, which is configuration underscore profiles.yaml. And I'm going to open that here. And as you can see, it's a YAML file where you have your Snowflake credentials here and multiple fields that you can fill out here with your Snowflake credentials. So I'm going to fill this out or I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to fill this out and then I'll come right back. Okay, so I configured the fields in the YAML file there and I filled out my Snowflake username, my Snowflake password, my Snowflake account, warehouse role, and default database and schema as well. So what that YAML file does is whenever you call a, a Cloudy SQL method, it will automatically look at that file for your default credentials. But you can also pass those credentials in and use those passed in arguments instead of the defaults if you want to. So here you can see with the magic uh, SQL to Snowflake method here, you can pass in your Snowflake username, your password, your account, your role, and your warehouse if you want to. So let me go through uh, first here how you would connect a Snowflake and inside a Jupyter Notebook and write SQL in Snowflake from that connection without Cloudy SQL. Oh, and so 
first what you do is you'd import the Snowflake connector. You'd create a connector object and you'd pass in your Snowflake credentials. Here I just have some dummy values, so it will fail. It won't run. Yeah, we got an error there. Um, incorrect password or username was specify specified. And then you'd have this Snowflake query here. You'd create a cursor object from the connection object. And then you could would be able to execute your Snowflake query from that cursor object. <clears throat> and then you could fetch those results as a pandas data frame. So this process isn't necessarily difficult, but it can be improved on, and I hope that we were able to do that with Cloudy Warehouses. I'll let uh, y'all be the judge of that, I guess. So let's open a new Jupyter Notebook here. We're going, first what you're gonna wanna do it, to load it is have that load command there. Let me reload the kernel here. So you have load x Cloudy SQL. Now this Jupyter Notebook can use the Cloudy SQL library. And I'm going to show you first how to use the magic method we have with Cloudy SQL, which is percent sign, percent sign, SQL, underscore two, underscore snowflake. And I'm going to kind of go through how to use this method. So on this first line here, where you actually call the method is where you can pass in your arguments, your inline arguments, if you want to. Now I can run this without any inline args and it will return the query results from this Snowflake or SQL query here that is automatically run in Snowflake for me. But I can also pass in arguments here. So I can set a destination variable, which is the first argument that you pass in if you want to include a destination variable. I'm going to use the DF destination variable. So what this is going to do, let me run this real quick, is it's going to uh, save the query results as a pandas data frame to that variable. So I saved it as df. So let's actually print df here. And as you can see, it is the it is a pandas data frame of those query results that I was I was uh, selecting everything from the dim customers table in my Snowflake environment there. So in addition to a destination variable, you can actually also pass in inline parameters. Uh, you can do so two ways. I'm going to show you the first way here. Is, and that is where you can pass in the parameter arguments directly as a dictionary string. So we'll have first name, which is going to be the key. And then we're going to have, it looks like we have Michael in the in this data frame here. So so what I can do with this dictionary string is I can actually use the keys in this string directly in my SQL statement if I want to. So let's do select star from dim customers table where first name in the actual table there is equal to, uh, let's take with the caps there, first name. So the way you use these passed in dictionary keys is you include them inside double brackets and it works a lot like Jinja if any of y'all are familiar with that uh, tool. So I have select star from dim customers where first name is equal to double brackets first name which is going to be Michael. That's the value of the first name key that I'm passing in here. So let's run this. And now let's print data frame and see what we get. So we ha it looks like we have two rows from that data frame where first name is equal to Michael. So you can also, let me show you the other way you can pass in parameters, is you can declare a dictionary string or a dictionary in the above cell, run that cell. So we have parameters which is a Python dictionary is equal to, uh, or has the first name key and value Michael. And then instead of passing in the dictionary string directly, whenever I call the params inline argument, I can do dollar sign and then parameters. And I can still run this query here. 
where first name is equal to first name. It's going to use that key. And then I can print out data frame again. And let's actually, let's add another parameter. So we'll have orders is equal to two. So now we can update this SQL query where number of orders is equal to orders. And let's see what happens here. Uh, we actually, I actually have to run this to update the parameters dictionary. Okay, now let's see what we get. So we got the one row in that table where first name is equal to Michael and number, number of orders is equal to two. So this kind of gives you an idea of how you can use the SQL to Snowflake magic that comes with Cloudy SQL. So on the first line, just to recap, you can pass in uh, your arguments where you can have a destination variable, parameters, and you can also pass in a username, or I can have my Snowflake username here. If I so choose, you can, let me uh, just go to it really quick. So you, have, you can pass in a username, a password, uh, an account, a role, and a warehouse. So whenever I don't pass in those arguments, the SQL to Snowflake magic is connecting to Snowflake credentials that I saved in the configuration.yaml file. But if I pass in those arguments, it will use the pass in arguments instead of the defaults in the uh, config file. So, and then I can, under the argument line here, I have some cell magic where I can write any SQL query I want and it, it will be run in Snowflake. So let's just give an example here. Let's actually drop drop the um, the table we just created. Or actually, no, let's not do that. Uh, first, we are going to write to a new Snowflake table, test Cloudy SQL by using the write snowflake method that comes with Cloudy SQL. So the way this works is you have a pandas data frame, which is the DF variable we have here. Let me just run that again. And then we have df.cloudysql.write snowflake. And then I have table is equal to test Cloudy SQL. And the way this method is working is it's using the database and schema saved in the configuration file, which I believe is test database and then pandas test or something uh, close to that. So let's run this and see what we get here. So it's writing this pandas data frame to this new Snowflake table that I'm creating with this command. So let's uh, grab the values from that table that we just created here see what we get okay so it actually wasn't a newly created table I already it was already existing so let's I actually want to overwrite that table with this new data so to do that I can set overwrite equal to true and what this will do and in, is instead of appending the data in this pandas data frame to the test cloudy SQL table, it will overwrite the existing data in that table and replace it with the data frame data. So let's run that. It's going to take a second, I guess. Okay. Successfully overwrote the existing table with your pandas data frame. Okay, we grabbed that using the SQL to Snowflake method. Um, with the SQL query, select star from test DB pandas cloudy test, test cloudy SQL. And now let's see what data frame is. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, I found my problem. I was running things in the wrong order. Uh, yeah. So let's run this, this SQL to Snowflake magic method up here again. We're going to have our data frame which is right here. <laughs> and then we are going to overwrite 
this data frame, which is, or this um, table, the test Claudia SQL table with the, with this pandas data frame data, which is one row where first name is Michael and number of orders is two. Okay, now let's see if it works. Let's hope it does. <laughs> Otherwise I have some extra work I gotta do. Um, okay, it worked. So yeah, that was just a user error on my part. So we have a data frame here where we overwrote the, the test cloudy SQL with this pandas data frame up here. So now I'm gonna show you how you can actually use the SQL to Snowflake magic to just write raw SQL. It doesn't have to be a select statement where you wanna return a table as a pandas data frame. So I can just call the method here, SQL to Snowflake, and I can write any SQL I want. So I'm gonna drop the test cloudy SQL table. So I have drop table if exists, um, the database and schema where it's located, and then the actual table. So let's run that. And now let's try it successfully ran Snowflake query. Now let's try to select everything from that table and see if it's there. Object, so I got a error here. Object test cloudy SQL does not exist or is not authorized. So yeah, so we ran the SQL in Snowflake and it dropped the table for us. So I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping that this that the Cloudy SQL library is helpful to uh, people working within Jupyter Notebooks and s using Snowflake, connecting to Snowflake. Um, it, I think it, it's good. It, uh, it helps to um, kind of streamline the process where before you had to do all of this to write your SQL, and now you can just call a simple method, write raw SQL, and then you can also use parameter arguments if you so choose. And we also manage the Snowflake connection process for you uh, if you configure the uh, configuration file, which I definitely recommend. It makes things a whole lot easier. As someone who works with Snowflake a lot, this library uh, it makes working with Snowflake inside a Jupyter Notebook a whole lot easier if you're a Python developer. If you're not, uh, I guess this doesn't really apply to you. <laughs> So, anyway, thank you for watching. Please let us know if you have any suggestions or features you'd like us to add or maybe anything you'd like us to change. This is still in development. Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and have a good one. Goodbye. Hashmap Megabytes.